more exclusive details tonight to share with you about Rideau Hall, this time about the Governor General's security detail. According to RCMP and Rideau Hall sources, Governor General Julie Payette's resistance to working with the RCMP, who of course are paid to protect her, has resulted in added security risks and added costs. This story comes on the heels of allegations of a toxic work environment created by Payette and allegations that prompted a review by the Privy Council office. Payette is also under scrutiny for spending more than $250,000 on renovations to increase privacy at Rideau Hall. Joining me now with more on all of this is the CBC's Ashley Burke, who of course has been reporting on this throughout the past uh, month. Let's start off with these new details about security costs. Explain for us what the relationship is like with the RCMP and what led to extra costs. Well, the relationship, we are, the, the day that you become a governor general, you become a symbol of Canada, and that makes you a threat. And it is mandated that you have an RCMP protective detail with you at all times for any of your personal duties or your work duties. And sources that I've spoken to, RCMP sources and Rideau Hall sources, describe that Julie Payette is a deeply private person who is uncomfortable with this constant police presence around her. And since the beginning, she has been pushing back and resisting that, they say. We spoke to seven people for this story who uh, could not be named because they said that, you know, they can't speak publicly about security details, uh, issues, but as well, uh, some of them say it could cost them their jobs. And they, 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 they said that this disdained uh, what they called it or this contempt for RCMP, she was quite vocal about it. So for example, there was um, a barbecue early in our mandate and she thanked all the employees there for and said that she appreciated them, but pointedly did not thank the RCMP and said it's because, you know, they weren't friends yet. And apparently people's draws, jaws just dropped because the RCMP were standing there listening to it. Uh, there's been a game of cat and mouse going on since the beginning, sources say. Uh, you know, in some cases, uh, she has evaded police or tried to here in Canada. And abroad, she's left her hotel room in the morning at dawn to work out alone without telling the police where she is. And because of that, they have had to uh, bring on an extra RCMP member on international trips to guard her door overnight to make sure that she doesn't leave her room um, so they don't know about it. Now, I spoke to a former RCMP superintendent who said that the, our, the governor general and police really have to work in it and close, have a close relationship and work uh, carefully together or else it can add up. Costs are horrendous as it is. You, you take, you know, a six person bodyguard team and, and it would be more than that, but let's just say a six person close protection team. You know, you're looking at a couple million dollars uh, not even counting the expenses of travel and everything. So those costs can add up uh, disproportionately if you've got somebody that's not cooperating. So when you talk about extra expenses or added expenses, can you give us an idea of some of the other ones? Well, multiple sources said that Payette regularly keeps her personal protective detail out of the dark about some of her plans. And then come last minute requests. So for example, they say it could drive up uh, overtime costs and as well as hotel costs. For example, she's been at the Citadel, her second official residence in Quebec City, and said she wanted to go to her cottage at that last minute. They had $400 hotel rooms booked in Quebec City, too late to cancel, so they had to leave them, abandon the and book new ones um, near uh, her, her near uh, her cottage north of Montreal. As well, Payette, uh, sources say that Payette prefers to travel business class uh, on commercially rather than taking a military aircraft, which does add additional se uh, security risks for the force. And sometimes tickets are booked last minute that could cost up to $12,000. As well, when she's abroad on international trips, apparently there have been cases where RCMP have had to apologize for her behavior to foreign security because they were treated badly. So in some cases, she's yelled at local police um, for getting too close to them. She's criticized their driving because uh, she spilled coffee on herself in the back seat, sources said. And even one member was replaced from a local police force because he was too tall and stood out. That's according to sources. So I know that you reached out to Rideau Hall to get their response to these allegations. What have they told you? Well, Pyatt's press secretary said that cost-saving measures are always at the heart of everything they do in their office. And in some cases, it has been cheaper to fly commercially. She also said that, like other Canadians, Payette has friends and family and plans that change, and they try to keep those changes to a minimum. In a statement, Ashley Smith said, while we do not comment on security issues, the Governor General is very grateful for the service her protective detail provides to her day in and day out, and has tremendous respect and admiration for them and the men and women of the police force. The last two years have been particularly busy when it comes to representing Canada both at home and abroad. Now RCMP say that it costs 7.4 million dollars for Payette's protective services in the last fiscal year and that's about $700,000 more than her predecessor's last full year uh, in office fiscally. 
Okay, I know you'll be on top of any more details that, that come about on this. Thanks, Ashley, the CBC's Ashley Work With the latest on Rideau Hall, I want to get some more perspective, specifically a security one. Pierre-Yves Bourdois is a former RCMP Deputy Commissioner. He joins us now from Gatineau over in Quebec. Hi, PY, good to see you as always. Good afternoon, Bashi. Help us understand in broad terms, before we get into some of these allegations, what is the relationship like between the RCMP and the Governor General? What role specifically is the RCMP playing there? Well, normally the RCMP, when the Governor General gets appointed, the RCMP and senior management would meet with the, uh, the new Governor General to explain their role and just to ensure that they provide a suitable balance between having the appropriate security level around the governor general's activity, both on the personal side and on the professional side, and ensure that uh, they allow the governor general to have enough flexibility within her own personal bubble. So they, they respect this and they work very hard, these professional works very hard to ensure that uh, there's, there's, they strike the right balance. But it's imperative though that the uh, governor general and the RCMP security details work hand in glove just to ensure that everybody's on the same page in order to avoid confusion and potentially embarrassment for both the governor general and the RCMP. So, so based on, on that point exactly, when you read through some of what is being alleged, what was your reaction? What do you think about that? Um, uh, personally, I have deep concerns with regards to our, um, our alleged behavior in relation to uh, protective details of the RCMP, uh, especially if you look at the current environment, Vashi, where on July 2nd, if you recall, uh, the assault on uh, Rideau Hall by um, a, a military individual that actually uh, was tracked by the RCMP on the ground of Rideau Hall and eventually arrested without incident. But you also look at recent uh, incident involving uh, public officials, uh, Captain McKenna in, uh, in Ottawa mm -hmm. and other public officials that have been targeted, specifically targeted. So looking at the governor general and what she stands for for our country, her role with the government and also with the general public, uh, uh, it is um, a troubling uh, to see that uh, such tension remains between the governor general and uh, or protective details. We know from my colleague Ashley's reporting that uh, the Governor General is very concerned uh, about privacy, right? That, it, that she clearly uh, prioritizes privacy or, or has some concerns around the lack thereof in this role. Uh, can you tell me a bit about uh, the RCMP's ability to work around that or if that, if that really does end up feeding a lot of the tension, do you think? Like, does the person who steps into that role or a public role just kind of have to acknowledge that some of their privacy is now gone? Absolutely, Bashi. And I've, uh, for one, uh, when I was deputy uh, commissioner uh, responsible for, amongst other things, protective policing, um, there, there's always some issues with the transition of a, a particular appointee in the role, a key role of governor general. Uh, and the transition sometimes is, is pretty hard uh, because uh, you go from uh, sometimes a very private person to become a public figure. So you need to adapt your behavior and you need to realize that uh, the life of you, as you've known it have changed considerably when you assume such an important role. Hence the reason why there needs to be a dialogue, especially on the first year, just so uh, the RCMP pr uh, protect the person, all the while trying to find a sweet spot to allow this person to have a private life. When you read the, the details particularly about, uh, you know, last minute changes or not informing them, that communication that you, you talked about being so important, not really existing and that end up, you know, that ends up costing extra money, let's say, for the flights or that kind of stuff. How important is, I mean, you talked about being in lockstep, but from a planning perspective, it's not like, you know, the RCMP can all of a sudden figure out how to be over in Europe and protect her, right? There needs to be a lot of, I'm guessing, advance that, that goes into that? Absolutely, Bashi. So normally in advance would be a uh, RCMP member traveling to a specific location to determine the environment, uh, the tread level, looking at the broader picture, and to be able to plan for what's predictable and also the unpredictable. So uh, uh, it requires a ton of energy, a ton of work, and these professional obviously wants to ensure that uh, the the protection of the, the governor general is uh, well insured. But in the meantime, if the same resources 
have to get involved in a cat and mouse game and invest, you know, resources just to ensure that uh, uh, the, the the governor general uh, has um, uh, adequate uh, adequate protection. Then it creates obviously additional work for protective details, and it creates also a, uh, a tense working relationship. How extensive is the detail? I know it obviously changes and has changed over the years, but in general terms, can you give us and our viewers a sense of uh, how many people might be involved or the size of the of the detail? Well, the details varies uh, according to events, actually. Uh, so if it's a small event and the, the tread level is low, then they'll have fewer uh, resources around the governor general. And But again, if it's a major event and the tread level um, increases, then it stands to reason that uh, uh, there will be closer protective, uh, uh, you know, details near the governor general. So every event, uh, the RCMP adapts to uh, the, the changing environment. And you're certainly very right to point out that there have been a number lately of very uh, targeted threats against Canadian politicians. So that's, that's something to keep in mind for sure. Thank you, PY. Appreciate your insights and your analysis as always. Always a pleasure, Vashi. Take good care. Pierre-Yves Bourgeois, he's a former RCMP deputy commissioner. He spoke to us from over in Gatineau, Quebec. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.